Okay, I'm gonna show you how to get that nice wide angle distortion look in Blender and how you can control exactly how much bending and curvature you want around the outside of like the image. So exactly how much of that fisheye effect you want. Here are some examples of me using this technique, this camera technique in some of my renders. And you can see it's just a fun effect that you can use to spice things up a bit and uh, just make things yeah, more fun, more interesting. So here's how you do that. Um, so by default, you will have, here's, here's a shot with, well, actually, let me go to the first one. Here's a shot using the perspective lens, and I'll show you how to change the settings in a second, but here's what it does. So the perspective lens, if you pay attention to like all these straight lines on the edge of the frame, look how like these lines along here just go straight up and down as you'd expect them to. And then if I switch to my second render slot here, um, this is where I would have used the panoramic lens and you can see what that does. It just, it's a, you know, that, that's a pretty subtle change right there, but you can see what that's doing. Um, just look at how the edge of this frame here, these, these, uh, straight lines here are now just kind of curving and nicely just bending around the outside to create that, uh, like fisheye type effect. So the way I like to do this is just by switching the lens type over from perspective to panoramic. So here's what that looks like. If you click on the camera and you go to this box right here, object data properties, and by default, your lens will be on perspective. So I have this set at 20 millimeters, so it's fairly wide. Um, if you just pull up your, your phone and you turn on like the main camera, that will be around 24 millimeters ish, like the equivalent of that. Um, it probably won't say that, but like on a camera, if you set it to 24 millimeters, it'll look roughly like that wide. So the, if you don't know what this is at all, millimeters is just like the amount of zoom. So the higher the millimeter number, the more zoomed in it is. Your default is going to be 50 here. Oops, not 590, 50. Uh, this right here. So then, you know, if you zoom that out a bit to 20, which is what I added that here, that's just pulling it back like this. So it's different than moving the camera back, right? It doesn't look the same as if I have the camera closer. Um, it's actually going to give you a different look, obviously, if you zoom in versus walk closer to something um, and zoom out versus walk farther. It's going to give you a different effect because you're actually moving the camera versus just zooming in and out. So anyways, here's how you actually activate that uh, panoramic lens. So in here, change it from perspective, click this drop dropdown. Uh, just there's a setting here called panoramic. And by default, I think it's this one, fisheye uh, equisolid. If I just set this to the same millimeters as I had before, it's going to look kind of crazy. So here it is 20 millimeters, 20 millimeters on perspective and then 20 millimeters on panoramic does like a, that effect, but quite extreme. So if you want to control this a little bit more, what you can do is when you switch it to panoramic, you get this extra drop down here and there's all these different types of stuff here. It could be really useful for like making an HDRI or whatever, some other weird stuff. The one I use all the time is uh, this one right here, fish eye lens polynomial. I think this is somewhat new. Uh, so make sure you're up to date in Blender. If you click this one right here, you'll get all these different settings here. I don't really know what any of this stuff means or does, but I do know that if you change K1, this slider right here, that's essentially your focal length now. So the number of millimeters, like the amount of zoom you're getting. And K2 is going to be the amount of distortion you get around the outside of the frame. And that's pretty much all you need to know for this effect. Uh, I would suggest you go in and like mess with these and see what they actually do. And you, you can really control the amount of distortion in different places in the lens with all these other sliders. But K1 is essentially focal length and K2 is essentially how much uh, distortion you're getting around the edge. So if I set it to whatever this is, you can see you can actually get uh, like there, there would be like, that's kind of similar to the perspective lens. So it's not like warping the outside at all. But if I pull it back here, just a little bit. This looks more like the, the panoramic, like the default panoramic lens before, but you could actually have it somewhere in between, you know, extreme and not at all. So I like to just kind of pull that back just so it's warping the edges a little bit, but not like anything insane. And I find that's just a nice, just gives it like a, a nice look. It's not too extreme. Um, so obviously if you take this effect to the extreme, it can look really cool sometimes, but it can also just ruin things. So I would say, play with this effect, but just treat it with a, uh, like use a bit of caution, you know, don't go so crazy with it that it's just like insane to look at. Although that can be fun sometimes like doing this, that is fun. This is like, anytime you see my renders that have a little bit of that, like 
distortion around the outside, that's this. Oh, one more thing I forgot to mention is in here, just to, uh, just something that complements this effect really nicely is using a bit of lens distortion with the, the node. So what this is, is if you look right in the corner of my render here, you see how like there's a bit of, uh, you'd call this like chromatic aberration or uh, fringing or like, you see how it's just a bit soft and like kind of weird in the edge of the frame here in like the very corner of my render. This is this node right here. If I just mute this and look at what it does without it, uh, just let it load here. So there we go. It's without this node, it's perfectly still like tack sharp in the corner, um, just around the outside of the frame. And I find it just looks uh, a bit more natural and like a real camera and just has a nice effect if you put a little bit of this on. Some people really don't like this effect. Like um, it's pretty easy to make it look bad by, by having this on here. And yeah, you can see it just adds a little bit of that softness back to the, to the edge of the frame there. So that's like most real cameras that you use in real life are gonna have a bit of that effect, this lens distortion, like um, chromatic aberration effect where like you can see it gets kind of split into its individual like red, green, blue channels here. Um, so it just, it makes it feel a little bit more real uh, and like you're shooting with an actual camera, which is always nice. But like I said, a lot of people, like if you turn this way up, it makes it look really bad, really fast. And um, a lot of people do not like this effect. So just again, use this with caution, um, you know, add enough to where it's like a little bit noticeable and makes it look better, but doesn't like, it's not so extreme that it's just distracting and makes it look worse. Um, but yeah, do whatever you want, obviously. So this is the value I use usually 0 0.0055. And I just leave that on in my default file. So I don't even have to worry about it. It just always adds a little bit, but not too much to my renders. If you want to learn more about my overall process of creating environments, I suggest you go and watch this video right here. It's probably my best video. It has a like overwhelmingly positive response I found and it's done really well. So if you want to check that out, I'll just leave a link to that one. And yeah, have a good rest of your day, I guess. Hopefully that was useful. Okay, bye.